Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm fantastic, Nathan. How are you today? I'm fantastic. I don't, I don't know if I'm fantastic, but I'm doing good. <laughs> you um, you good enough? Yeah, it's a, it's a day. Uh, but I did look, at, we talked before the show got started, we kind of bounced some ideas on what we were going to talk about. And I'm really excited about what we're going to be talking about because uh, it's some stuff that I struggle with. It's some stuff that I think other people struggle with. And it's kind of the linchpin to making all of this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, it's that whole thing. I know how to ride this bicycle so well that I forget like the baby steps of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm finding out more and more that um, really defining who it is that you want to work with as a client is like the crux of it. It's the most important aspect of it. I call it ICA, ideal client avatar. Um, I didn't coin that. Um, I don't know who did. I don't really care. Ideal client avatar, meaning put some parameters around who it is that you want to work with. I've said this a lot and I've been saying it more often. Just because somebody can be your client doesn't mean you should let them. And people, when, when, specifically people that don't really know me and my message, when they hear me say that, they're like, what the fuck? Um, if there's a hundred thousand people that could be your client, right. In your marketplace, there's about 85,000 of those people that should no way, shape or form ever become your client and you shouldn't let them. And that's my take on this. It also identifying your ideal client avatar makes it really easy to figure out who is possibly your client. And then it allows you to just be your natural weird ass self and attract the right ones and put all of the leads that you come in contact with through a natural filter for both you and them to allow them to decide if they are the right fit for you. But also if they stick around long enough, they're pretty much going to be the right fit, right? And there's a lot of people that are trying to be something that they're not. And when we as, as a species do that, we attract people into our world that are absolutely not the right fit for us. And we do this in our, in our regular relationships. We do this in our, in our friendships. We do this in our intimate relationships. And what's so interesting is, is we don't correlate that to clientele. And when we can figure out who it is that we actually like and why, it makes it really easy to identify your segment of the marketplace that is there for you, right? You're their only option. And that makes turning them into clients super easy. So ICA, what is it? It's, it's putting parameters around a group of people who could be your client. And it looks like this. The very top of it, they have to want and need the thing that you do. They have to be able to pay for it and they have to be ready to get started now. That makes a lead. Well, what goes from a lead to a prospect in my mind is when they go from just any lead to the right lead, they become an ideal client avatar, meaning they want it, they need it, they can pay for it, they can get started now, but they share some of your same values, right? Our global world view and value is where we align with people. Nathan, you and I are really, really good friends because we share some of the main core values, right? Awesome. Well, once we start there, um, just because somebody fits all of that, your specific way of accomplishing a thing for a client might not be what they're looking for, right? If you do Facebook ads or you do copy for Facebook whatever. And somebody's like, yeah, but I'm not on Facebook and my clients aren't on Facebook and I don't want to be on Facebook. You're not the right solution. Right? So once we get those couple of things down, then we're looking at, are we aligned in what we're trying to accomplish? Right? Is this guy trying to, you know, 
I was going to say something and I'll refrain from that. Is, is this person trying to accomplish an end result that I think is correct, that I agree with, that I enjoy doing, right? You're a copywriter, Nathan. You can write copy for somebody. And if they want, you know, if they want to buffalo somebody into buying a thing, they're probably not going to be a good fit for you. You also don't like working in certain markets. Well, somebody might have the want, the need, they can pay for it, they can start now, and you share all the same core values, but they want you to do your thing in a market that you don't have any interest in. They're not an ideal client avatar. So, it's all about putting parameters around this idea, and it breaks down like this. If there's 100,000 people in a rainstorm, and you sell umbrellas, and out of that 100,000 people in a rainstorm, 1,000 of them are wearing those rubber ducky boots, right? Those rubber plastic rain boots. Awesome. Well, that, that shows that they want to keep their feet dry. Cool. They might be a lead for you. Well, out of those 1,000 people that have those boots, 200 of them also have a red raincoat. Cool. Now we're getting a little bit warmer, right? But we're not quite there yet. Out of those 200 people, there's 100 people that also have a blue scarf. And out of those 100 people that have all three of those, there's 50 people that also have gloves. Sweet. Those people need to keep their head dry and you sell umbrellas. Well, out of those 50 people that have rain boots, rain coat, scarf, and gloves, half of them also have hats. They don't need your umbrella. So out of 100,000 people, there's 25 in this example, perfect for you right now clients to sell an umbrella to. It's all about narrowing down who it is that we're trying to connect with. I don't know about you, but I don't want to talk to a thousand people before I land a client or two. I don't want to talk to a hundred people before I land a client or two. I don't want to talk to 10 people before I turn one person into a client. I want to talk to 10 people and get eight or nine of them on as clients. That's what ICA is and that's why it's important. We've only all got so much time and getting clients requires us to do some form or some level of prospecting. And if we narrow that target down really well in all the right ways, then it makes it really easy for us to spend the minimal amount of time connecting with the right people to accomplish that end goal, turning people into clients. Yeah. So when I first heard you talking about this, I think it was in Leeds Lab, you were talking about when you first started off in a particular sales industry or sales niche, um, you were just making calls to anybody who fit this general parameter. Um, and then you had to go through and you notice, well, these people are more responsive. So I'm only going to make calls to these people. And out of these people, there's a subsection and these are the most, and you just narrowed it down until you said, I'm only going to call the people that are the most likely to give me the right response. In business, a lot of us, our avatar is I help single moms who are 35 to 45 who have diabetes and also have the time to cook at home. And they're like, there, I've nailed my avatar. But it feels like when you do it that way, it feels kind of like you've got a hint of the direction that you want to go in. You haven't nailed down what true north is. So you're kind of wandering north, but sometimes you stray northwest, sometimes you stray northeast. And if you don't know what true north is, if you don't know exactly where on the map you're trying to get, there's no chance of actually getting there unless randomly one out of 80 clients actually ends up being the one that you really love working with. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's uh, this, this thing that we're talking about at this level is a highly trained sales professionals process for prospecting, Right. Let's use that example. Just because they're 35 to 45, they're stay-at-home mom with diabetes who's willing to cook their own food. Fantastic. Well, you might not get along with people that are in Nebraska and Iowa and North Dakota, South Dakota, right? You might be from Montana and you just, for whatever reason, culturally, you just don't jive with people from those couple of states. But you totally get along with people in, in Colorado and Utah and Idaho and Washington State. Knowing that helps you make that a little bit more true north. Fantastic. Well, let's, let's go even a little bit further than that. Do you like soccer moms or do you like hippie 
gardeners, two totally different marketplaces, right? Two totally different levels of client. Do you want somebody that's all about Western medicine or do you want somebody that's a little bit more naturalistic? Are you looking to connect? Like, this is what we're talking about. Identify it. Just because on the surface they look like they could be a client does not mean they're the right fit. And too many of us are, I, I, here's what it comes down to. My, what I've noticed over the last couple of years doing this is <clears throat> people think if I narrow it down too far that A, there's not going to be anybody and B, that's not going to be enough clients for me. So I'm willing to just take on anybody who could become a client. And the problem with that is twofold. One, they suck as clients at least 51% of the time. And the other piece is you're now hindered in what you can charge. The more specific you get, the more you can charge. And people don't seem to understand this. It also makes it really, really, really easy to have that sales conversation. You need two things to get a client, leads and a sales conversation. The leads piece of it, you've got to be really targeted, very, very highly targeted. And then, yeah, you're going to have to go validate that a little bit. You're going to have to go talk with people that look like this fictitious person that you made up. And guess what? When you're like totally dead on in your marketplace, they're only going to be an 80 or an 85% match to what you created. So you go back and you make some adjustments. Now it's 85% on target. And then you go back and make some adjustments. Well, you can only make those adjustments after you've had conversations. But guess what? You're never going to get it perfect before you go get one as a client. Mm -hmm. And actually in the next episode, I kind of want to do a little bit of, of, deep diving into what you just mentioned, because that's kind of the, the second part of making all of this work. But before we're out of here, um, do you have any resources for people that are trying to nail down their ideal client avatar? I know that in Leads Lab, you, you do a really good job of breaking it down. But for people that aren't in Leads Lab, is there another way where they can get kind of wrap their head around if they didn't fully comprehend or if they want a little bit more, uh, more than just the tip? Where can they go? More than just the tip. Well, there's there's two places. You can go to 30dayleadslab.com and you can opt in there and you're going to get our full ICA workbook. Several, several pages and there will be a walkthrough video accompanying that here shortly. Um, by the time you're listening to this, it's probably already up with that. And the second place is um, the rest of our podcast episodes salesgorillapodcast.com. Either of those two places, this is like, this is the foundation of what we talk about is ideal client avatar. And everything that we talk about really goes into getting better and better and better at that. Yeah. And the ICA is the foundation. It's the linchpin. It's mm -hmm. what makes everything else that much more potent. So thank you for, thank you for entertaining me because I wanted to, I, I selfishly wanted you to really get into this episode today. Um, and I appreciate it. And I'm sure the, the listeners out there appreciate it as well. And one more time, if they missed it, what's the, what's the website for the podcast? Salesgorillapodcast.com. Awesome. All right, man. Until next time, we'll catch you. We'll catch you later. Peace out Cub Scouts. Hey, don't forget. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you that just shouldn't be my client.